What's going on you guys, this is Tech HD, and today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new lineup of microphones from Rode and this is specifically tailored for gamers and streamers in mind, not only with the hardware but also with the software. So we got the Rode X lineup. So we got two new microphones, we got the XCM50 which is a cardio condenser microphone and then we got the XDM100 which is a dynamic microphone. And like I said, not only about the hardware but it's also with their software. So they came out with a brand new software called Unify and this is basically, if you know about Elgato products with their way wavelength software it's basically like that but with way more features and so it's really really cool so let's dive in let's unbox this let's take a look at the features talk about the settings we're going to be getting into the unify software and then we're going to be doing a bunch of audio tests and then i'll give you guys my overall thoughts so now taking a look at what each microphone comes with starting with the xcm50 we have a usb c to c cable a 3 meter 3.5 millimeter extension cable the tripod 2 with the quarter 20 to 5 8 adapter already on it and the microphone itself on the front we have a volume wheel for the headphone connection and it also acts as a mic mute button there are also two light indicators on the back there is a usb c port and a headphone port and on the bottom there is a 5 8 hole to be attached to the tripod 2 or on a boom pole Lastly, after attaching the XCM50 onto the tripod, this is how it looks like. Now, taking a look at the XDM100, it comes with a USB C to C cable, a 3 meter 3.5 millimeter extension cable, the PSM1 shock mount, the Pop Shield microphone, and lastly, the microphone itself. On the back of the mic, we have a volume wheel for the headphone that also acts as a mic mute button. There's also a headphone port, and on the bottom, there is a USB C port. On the top, there is a metal grill protecting the microphone, and if we remove that, we'll see the microphone in a rubber shock mount of some sort so that no vibration affects the audio, and the metal grill also has a pop filter. Lastly, here is how the XDM100 looks like with the shock mount and the microphone attached. Looking at the two mics side by side, these are the Rode X microphones, so now let's do a couple of audio tests to see how they sound like. So the first audio that we're trying out is the XCM50. This is their cardio condenser microphone. It has 24-bit at 48 kilohertz, and this is identical to their mini USB, but of course it has that internal DSP chip, so you can have their Aphex, their compressor, their oral exciter, their big bottom, and their noise gate. And we are recording it directly on my laptop with the Unify software, and we'll get more into that in a bit. But basically, this is the raw audio. There is no post-processing. There is nothing that I did in the Unify software, the only thing that I changed was the gain. I increased the gain from about up to 17 decibels, and that is keeping it around negative 12, negative 18 in that area. But basically, by default, it has the compressor, the oral exciter, the big bottom, and the high pass filter set to 75 hertz. So that is the default that I have it set to. And of course, we're monitoring everything. I'm using the NTH100 headphones from Rode, and I have the uh, volume set to about 45% and so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below as far as this audio goes we have the tripod 2 that it comes with of course and uh, yeah that is basically it and of course we have the mute mic so if I were to press this now you guys are being able to hear me but yeah like I said this is the raw audio everything by default and now let me show you guys how it sounds like when I disable everything and have it set to about that so now we have the noise gate, the compressor, the oral exciter, the big bottom, and the high pass filter disabled. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below as far as this audio goes. I didn't do anything as far as the game goes, but yeah, we are still recording on the Unify software. And just in case if you guys want to hear it, this is how the audio sounds like with the high pass filter set to about 150 hertz. So it goes from off, 75, and 150 hertz. So let me know what you guys think of that audio down below as well. Everything else in the Aphex is disabled, by the way. Now I'm going to be showing you guys how the off access is. Like I said, this is a cardioid condenser microphone, so it's a little bit sensitive. But if you're in a nice, well-treated room, you shouldn't be getting so much as far as the reverb goes. But this is how it sounds like when I'm talking directly at it. This is how it sounds like if it's coming from a 90 degree angle. And this is how it sounds like when it comes to a 180 degree angle. And this is how it sounds like when it comes to a 45 degree angle. A lot of people tend to recommend it this way so you guys aren't hearing so much as far as my breathing and the plosives when it comes to that. But now we're going to be trying out a plosive test. And now we're going to be trying a plosive test. The microphone has a built in pop filter but there's no external add on pop filter so let's see how it sounds like. Bob brought the box of bricks to the basement. Bob brought the box of bricks to the basement. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Alright, let me know what you guys think of that. 
And now we're testing out the XDM100 dynamic microphone. So from the XDM50, that one is a cardioid condenser microphone. This one is a dynamic one. So that's the main key difference from that one. This one is more broadcaster style, whereas the cardioid condenser microphone sounds a little bit more natural, but this one is a lot less sensitive. So if you're not in a well-treated room and there's not a lot of microphones or in a lot of furniture, stuff like that, and you hear a lot more echo, the XDM100 would be more for the route for you compared to the XDM50 because that one will catch a lot more reverb and echo. So let me know what you guys think as far as the audio from the XDM100. Same thing as far as this goes, we are using the Rode Unify to record the audio. And then this one is the completely raw audio test. The only thing that is enabled is the default stuff. So like the compressor, the oral excited, the big bottom, and the high pass filter is set to 75 hertz. The only thing that I did differently was increase the gain since this one's a lot less sensitive, uh, we had to boost up that gain to about 22 decibel level, whereas the other one was set to about 17. So let me know what you guys think. We have the PSM1 uh, shock mount. It comes with that. This one also comes with an add-on mic foam, even though it already has one built into the microphone itself. And then we are testing uh, using the PSA1 Plus. And then this is identical to the podcaster microphone and similar to the procaster microphone that I've been using for a few years now. So you can see completely uh, similar, identical as far as that goes. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of the audio down in the comments below. And now we are testing the audio when it comes to everything disabled as far as the AFAX. So no noise gate, no compressor, oil excited, big bottom, and the high pass filter is set to off. So let me know what you guys think of that audio test. And if I were to enable the high pass filter, now we have it set to 150 hertz. So there's off, 75, and 150 hertz. So let me know what you guys think of that audio as well. And then, like I said, I have the NTH100 hooked up to it monitoring. I have it set to about 35%. Uh, as far as that goes. And then, of course, this button is also a mute fun functionality. So if I were to press it, And now, and there's also an indicator light on the side as well. So that helps you a little bit as far as that goes. Now doing an off access audio test, this is how it sounds like when I'm talking directly to the microphone. This is how it sounds like if I was talking to the side of the microphone. And this is how it sounds like when I'm talking at a 180 degree angle. And this is how it sounds like if it was set to about a 45 degree angle when it comes to reducing the plosives and the breathing, if you guys were to hear that. But yeah, as far as a dynamic microphone, it's not as sensitive, so it shouldn't be catching so much of that background noise. I should be much quieter compared to the XTM50. That one should have caught my, my voice a lot more when we were doing the off-access test. And now getting into the plosive test, we're going to be trying it without the microphone that is provided. We're going to be doing that test first, then with the microphone, and then of course I have the WS2 that I use on my Procaster. We're going to be trying it on that as well. So Bob brought the box of bricks to the basement. Bob brought the box of bricks to the basement. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Bob brought a box of bricks to the basement. Bob brought a box of bricks to the basement. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Bob bought a box of bricks to the basement. Bob bought a box of bricks to the basement. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. All right, let me know what you guys think of that audio. So now I want to show you guys a little bit more in depth as far as the Rode Unify software and the settings that I've been rocking for the past couple of weeks when it comes to gaming and streaming. Now, if you guys are already used to an Elgato product like the Wave XLR or the Wave 3 microphone and their software, the Rode Unify is very similar to that, but there's a lot more in depth when it comes to it. And there's a lot more features that you can use with the Rode Unify, which I really like. So just to let you guys know real quick that I'm rocking the XDM100 microphone. You guys are hearing the audio, of course, from that. And then I have the headphone output connected all the way to my SteelSeries game deck. And so with that I am able to monitor the browser, the music, any of the effects in OBS as well. And we'll get into that in a little bit. And just to let you guys know, I also have the XCM50 hooked up to that because the Unify could have up to two microphones basically. And so you guys could do a podcast and do any type of gameplay and have two microphones set up for two different people, which is really cool. So just to show you guys a little bit as far as the Rode Unify, we have channels over here. So we got the XCM100, the XCM50. We also have my capture card, my, my Elgato capture card. I got the music for Spotify. I got the browser for like the OBS uh, sound effects and stuff like that. I have the chat for Discord and I have the system for my regular speakers. And then I can add more. I also have the sound effects here as well. I can add more as well. I can add my game, I can add virtual and I can add another audio device, which is really cool. And so this is the main layout as far as how your stream is. And the way that they uh, separate it is by a couple different 
uh, tabs. So you got your stream, you got your headphone monitoring, your headphone too, since I have two microphones hooked up to it. I got chat, I got recording, and I got monitor. So we're gonna get into that as well. And just to let you guys know that you guys could record the audio straight from the Unify software through here, which is really, really cool. And also on the top right, you've got my preferences and we got channel assignment. So not only can you organize the layout of how you want it to be, like I can move the music, I can move the line in, I can move my chat and all that. I can also change the colors on the little eye droplet here and I could just change the color and be a little bit more organized. But then I could also add the audio devices here as well, or I could just disable it. And so as well here, we got our little faders. So now we have our volume set. This goes all the way to 100. So each of these dashes are about 10, so 10, 20, all the way to 100. And by default, it's set to about 60. So now you guys are hearing my voice a little bit lower. But by default, it's set to 60. And then here on the left side, you have your safety levels on what it says it's about a good audio level. So it's about negative six to about negative 20 decibel level. And that seems to be about a good audio of how you want everything to sound like. So for me, when it comes to streaming, I have my XDM100 set to max so that you, everybody can hear me. And then I have my game set to about that 60%. And that seems to still be audible uh, when it comes to gameplay like Call of Duty, Apex, uh, God of War, stuff like that. I have my music set to about 30% and then I can also dial it down if I need to. I have my browser set to about 40% so that I can hear anything as far as alerts like followers, subs, donations, stuff like that. And then my chat with Discord, I have that set to about 80% so that the stream can hear my teammates as well as anything that they want to talk about. And then my system is optional. Uh, this is just for when it comes to my speakers. I usually have that off, but every once in a while, I want to play something from there as well. And then the XCM50, I have that muted. And you can see on the bottom, you can only listen. You could also enable what you want to just listen to this one item. Uh, so you can mess with the volume individually and not be, um, you know, distracted by any of the audio, uh, other stuff. And then we also have the mute functionality, so I can mute this as well. And now I unmuted myself. And so I have that XCM50 muted. And now if we go into the other tabs for my headphones, so like what I have connected right now, all that I want to hear right now is my music, my browser, my chat, and the system. And you guys are seeing right now, there's another blue little fader here, and this is telling you where your stream is set to. So I can individually set my faders, which is really nice. I could be louder, I could be lower for myself, or I could be completely muted for myself if I don't want to hear any of the music and I'm focused on the game. But then I could click on the streamer and it goes straight back to it. I could also unlink them if I want to and just individually set it and I'll have to link it to the stream if I want to. The other thing that's really cool is that if you get into the stream and then you change the volume in the music, it'll also move the headphones. So let's say, for example, I have the music set all the way down in the headphones but then I go to the stream and I bring the stream one a little bit higher and then I go back to my headphones, everything is linked so it goes up at the same distance which is really nice and then I can also relink it if I want to. Now if I go back to my stream and I go back down to about 30% and I go to my headphones, it's gonna be there as well which is really cool. And I don't wanna hear myself, I don't wanna hear my audio, I don't wanna hear my friend's audio and I don't wanna hear the gameplay as well because I'm also hearing the gameplay from my game deck on my SteelSeries headphones. If I go to my headphones too, sometimes maybe my friend wants to hear himself a little bit as well. He wants to hear the music, the browser, and the chat. If he doesn't want to hear anything as far as the music go, I could disable it on the top of the channel and just disable that or re-enable it if I ever want to, which is really cool. And then in the chat functionality is really cool. So this is if this is for the people that are on Discord and they want to hear uh, you, not only you, but you could also enable stuff for them to hear as well. So the discord they are hearing both you and your friend if you want them to hear the music that you're playing as well you could just enable that and do that as well if you want to hear something on the browser you could do that as well if you want them to hear themselves which is really cool and then i could also disable that if i want to so if i want them to listen to a really cool music that i really like i could do that as well which is really nice and then if i want them to hear something from the gameplay from the gameplay or from the browser i could do that as well but normally it's just my own voice. I just have them listen to me. Every once in a while I can have them listen to music if I want to. And then in the recording, um, this is optional of course. If you just want to record yourself, if you want to have some music in the background, you could do that as well. If you want to do sound effects here and have some air horns, 
or some fireball or surprise or anything like that and you can also add uh, more if you want to you can all the way you can have all the way up to eight different uh different tabs which is really cool and there are eight in each of those tabs which is really nice so you have endless possibility as far as that goes i need to mess with a lot more when it comes to the sound effects but that's really cool when it comes to recording and when it comes to podcasting and then the last thing is monitoring so the monitoring on the bottom right you have your monitor settings and i have my speakers connected to the monitor tab and you can also have the speakers connected to any of the other tabs which is really cool but I have it set to my monitor tab. I can disable that or mute it if I want to. And so sometimes not only do I want to hear the sound effects of like the um, new follower subscriber uh, on my headphones, but I want to also have it be playing through my speakers as well, just in case if I don't hear it for whatever reason or if I have my headphones off, you know, stuff like that. So that's really cool. I can also have it be in the system. I can also have music be playing in the speakers as well if i want to or i can connect a different set of headphones if i want to as well which is really nice so you have an endless possibility as far as that goes and these are the settings that i've been rocking with and then lastly on the bottom left i have my headphone output i can literally hear the headphone of my friend i can hear the audio from the chat i can hear the audio from the recording and i can hear the audio from the stream normally i just have it set to headphone one but every once in a while i want to change it a little bit and i want to hear just that tab itself which is really cool so it's a lot more advanced compared to what elgato is offering and there is still a couple of things that i want uh, road unify to add as far as settings and some little key features as well which is uh, I will be talking to Rode as far as that goes. And not only that, like I said, you can also record directly in the Unify software. So you can hit that record button. And then in the recording viewing tab, uh, the recording view tab, you could play back the audio. You can export it and they have different platform uh, little presets like Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, stuff like that. And you can export the audio. And not only that, but if you have multiple things playing like music, the browser, sound effects, your other friends, stuff like that. If you go on the top right, you go to preferences and you go to the pref uh, preferences, you could have a multi-channel. So each of one of those different um, channels are saved individually. And so if you want to mess with the music or if you want to mess with anything else as far as your friend audio and do any little touch-ups like that, you could individually do that. Maybe you don't want to play any of the background music on YouTube, but you want to play background music on Spotify. You could do that as well, which is really cool. So I love that flexibility as far as that goes. And then as far as setting all of these to be individual devices, you do the top right, you launch your Windows settings, and then from here, you are able to individually set them as well. So like I said, I have my Discord set to the chat output. I have the browser of OBS set to the browser output. I have my uh, Spotify set to the music output. And so that's how I have it set as far as that goes. The other thing that I want to let you guys know is that each of these channels have their own different gains and settings. So for the microphones like the XCM100, they have their Aphex as well as their gain and their high pass filters. So you have your noise gate, your compressor, your oil exciter, and your big bottom. They also have the advanced tab here as well so you could go individually and set them these are the settings that i've been rocking so far so let me know what you guys think as far as the audio goes but this is your big bottom this is your oil exciter we also have the noise gate when it comes to the threshold and all of that and then we also have the compressor and then i have my high pass filter set to 75 hertz and i have my gain set to 22. you can also go to your xcm50 and you can do the same thing here as well and not only that, but you can also set the different gains of each of these channels. So, for example, with the music, I have the music set to about negative 24 dBs. And that tells you that the highest that it's going to go up to is negative 24. Can't go higher than that. So if I set my volume all the way to max, you can see that the volume or the audio is not going higher than negative 24 dB. I could also increase that if I want to. And I could do about negative 10. And you can see it over here that it's going to negative 10 but I like to do it by default, negative 24. Everything else by default is set to negative 12. So by default, the browser, the chat, the system is gonna be negative 12, and you can also change that if you want to as well. Now for the line in, as far as my capture card goes, I have that set to uh, 12 dB plus 12 dB. So I also edit the, uh, change the volume from here as well. So that seems to be about the good sweet spot as far as gameplay audio goes. But yeah, just to let you guys know that you guys could change your own individual gain as far as each of the channels go. And then those are the advanced tabs as far as the microphones go when it comes to the Rode X microphones. These are the advanced tabs. You are not going to get these as far as with any other microphone. You'll get some basic settings when it comes to Rode microphones. But if you want your Apex uh, compressor, oil exciter, and big bottom, you do have to get an XCM100 or an XCM50. 
Now, of course, this software is not perfect, and there is a couple of things that I would love for Rode to implement as far as the Unify software goes. One of the major things is that sometimes the microphones does not get recognized in the Unify, so I have to unplug the USB and plug it back in, and so sometimes that's a hit and miss, or I have to close the application completely and reopen it in order for it to detect the microphone. So that's con number one. The second thing as well is that I would love for these faders to have percentage and I know that these go by 10% increments, but I would love for them to every time I go down, I can set I can see that's at negative, that's at 10% or 15 or 20 and be really precise if I want to. Elgato has that, so I would love for Rode to have that. And I really like that feature as far as from the Elgato software. Not only that, but the other thing that I would love for Rode to implement is also the ability to change these texts. So I can't update these texts. So instead of line in, I would love it to be like Elgato capture card. Instead of music, I would love it to be Spotify. Instead of browser, I could put OBS Studio. And instead of chat, I could just put Discord. And then maybe uh, add my own icons if I want to as well. Be a little bit more specific and have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the software itself and be uh, a little bit more organized as well. The last thing that I want to mention that I've been personally struggling with that isn't necessarily a con but more of an idea or a suggestion for Rode is that when I switch from my Elgato microphone or my Elgato Wave XLR to the Rode X and I want to change as far as the music or as far as the browser audio or the sound effects on the fly, the major issue is that I had with the Elgato over any other company is that because of the Stream Deck and because of it being Elgato with Elgato, I could set presets to easily set the music button to be muted or to be lowered on my end or stuff like that as far as it goes with the Rode X you don't have that ability you have to go into the software itself using the mouse and uh, lowering it with the fader or muting it directly from there and that takes a little bit more time as far as from what I've experienced when it comes to being in a gunfight or being in like a search and destroy match and I want to get more immersed into the game and I want to lower that music on my end I have to go into that tab of the headphones I have to lower the volume or completely mute it and that takes a little bit more time compared to with the stream deck from elgato with the wave xlr uh, microphones i just easily press that button and it's set as a preset which is really nice as far as their end so i would love for road x to come out with an equivalent version of the stream deck or to be compatible uh supported with the stream deck as far as plugins go but that's what i would love to see but i do feel like road knows about this and i feel like that they're going to be coming out with their own version of a stream deck to be compatible with the road x microphones like i said these are the first microphones as far as the road x lineup along with the unify software so i expect them to be coming out with more and more products throughout time maybe an xlr microphone maybe an audio interface that works with the unify software you know the possibilities are endless maybe their own version of a stream deck to compete with elgato honestly the possibilities are endless so let's see throughout time let's see what they come out with but yeah that's the major issue that i've been dealing with as far as with the road x with the unify software just the ability to make it quick and easy i would love for road to be invested in that as well so my overall thoughts as far as the Rode X lineup goes is I love the audio quality coming from the XDM50 as well as the XDM100. Not only that, but the Unify software is really nice when it comes, it gives you a lot of possibilities and a lot of flexibilities when it comes to the audio and messing with that, which is really, really cool. I used this for a couple of weeks when it came to streaming and when it came to gaming. And not only that, but I also used these microphones when it came to podcasting. I made a podcast with my friend and we did the Switch It Up podcast, the fifth episode, and he was using the XDM50 and I was using the XDM100 and we were using this Unify software on my laptop and we had it all recording to the Unify software as a multi-channel, which was really nice. So let me show you guys a quick clip on that so that you guys can determine how it is as far as podcasting goes. If they have people it or not. camp, like when, when I say people camp, I remember when the like 30 series cards, like even just like the graphics cards that have come in the past like two or three years, people like during COVID, I remember specifically people waited in the longest lines, camping like the night before. Remember the tweet? There was a stampede that happened at our micro center, like a stampede. Of, yeah. So if you look up like micro center stampede in Dallas, you'll it's see a bunch of kids. Uh, this was. But overall, I love the Rode X lineup and I love where Rode is going towards when it comes to gamers and streamers and also podcasters. I see the XDM50 and the XDM100 used a lot when it comes to podcasting, but I know they are mainly focusing on streaming and gaming, but I love the Unify software and I love the audio quality and also the DSP with the Apex uh, software as well, the advanced tab as far as that goes. It's really nice and honestly, it's not that hard to understand the software, but there are a couple things I would love for them to add later on down the road. But there you guys 
have it. Let me know what you guys think of everything down in the comments below, as well as everything is going to be linked down in the description below. The XCM50 is going for $150, as well as the XDM100 is going for $250. And when you guys purchase either one of the microphones, you guys get the Rode Unify software for free. Now, if you guys don't have a Rode X microphone, you guys can still get the Rode Unify software, but you do have to pay. So it's about $5 a month US, or you guys could pay the annually, which is about 45 bucks annually uh, US. And Australia, it's about $7.99, and Australia money is about $69.99. So I did a little bit of that conversion. But you have the ability to use the software with any microphone that you want to. You're just not going to get all the advanced processing. You get some of the basic ones if you use the Rode microphones, or you don't get any of them if you're using any other branded microphone. But you still have that capability of using the Rode Unify software and everything that has to offer as far as your music, your browser, all your plugins compared to other brands so i love that ability that road is keeping it open for everybody but you do have to pay but thank you guys so much for watching please like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever i upload a new video follow me on twitter youtube instagram twitch and tiktok as always second i'll catch you guys in the next video peace